Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord? I know I am. You know, it's the new year, right? I mean, it's still the new year. I don't know where January went, but (laughs) it's now February. It's the new year. And, you know, statistics have shown in this report that I read that New Year's resolutions are typically broken by the 12th day of January. You know, I don't know why we do that to ourselves. We set these resolutions, these, these promises that we try to, to tell ourselves, and then we just set ourselves up for failure. I think we think that when we make those resolutions that we automatically become better people and that we somehow redeem ourselves, we will redeem ourselves, or we've redeemed ourselves from the past. Well, it bears some truth to that, but only if you will be willing to actually leave the past behind. Amen. Let's first go to Philippians 3.12. Philippians 3.12, if you can turn your Bibles there. I know that a lot of us A lot of us, I I mean all of us, we cannot help hit those bumpy roads as we live, as we drive in the in in, in the lanes of life, right? We're gonna have those bumpy roads of frustration, anger, disappointments, mistakes, hurts, hurts, huge hurts, and tragedies even. Wait, but but we do not need to stay there. When you do, when you do, it's, it's really causing you to miss out on life. But I'm not minimizing that because there are many people that get stuck in the past. Why? Because they're staring too long in the rear view mirror instead of looking through the windshield of the present. They're looking back. They're staring in the back. They're staring in the past. Quit staring in the past. Look and fix your gaze at Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Quit trespassing into the past because it's the past. It doesn't matter how good it was, okay? Be blessed and relish those moments, but you don't need to live there. And then if it's so bad, why in the world would you want to stay there? Why, oh why, I ask that question. If it is so bad, why will you want to stay in the past, in that moment, when it's over? You know, you need to get over it, right? This book that I've uh, read, you know, The Last Arrow by Erwin Raphael McManus, he was the author of, or he is the author of The Barbarian Way. Great read, great book. But he said that, on chapter 4, I believe, set your past on fire. Burn it. Set your past on fire so that you don't go back to it. Okay? The only time that you can probably look back is if you're learning from it. A mistake that you've learned from it. And again, if it is a good memory, relish it. But still, it's over. You can't stay there. Amen. So Philippians 3.12. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things. This is what Paul is saying. And I'm saying it with him. Okay? We should be saying this with him. Or that I have already reached perfection. I know none of us reached perfection. Not even close. But I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ, Jesus Christ, first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race, you know, pressing forward to reach that finish line. 
and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. Amen. So, being consumed with your past typically goes in a few ways. Three that I can think of. Okay. Despair, pride, and false hope. Okay. Despair. Some of us here today probably have been deeply hurt or we've deeply hurt someone. And it still haunts us. And some may even live or have had a troubled past. But see, I said have lived a troubled past. Maybe, you know, hey, what God will not be mocked, the Bible says, right? That whatever you sow, you must reap. But you have God in you. You have Jesus, the Holy Spirit, living inside of you. You're not alone nor forsaken, so you can fight the fight. Fight the good fight of faith that if you cling on to him, he will help you. He will help you not stay and get stuck there. That's despair. That's causing despair if you, if you live, if you choose to stay in the past, if you choose to dwell in the troubled past. Okay, if you've been redeemed like Paul, like me, you don't need to stay there. Despair, pride. We might let our past accomplishments <clears throat> define us, right? We might convince ourselves that we're, we've arrived, we're too good, we're the best thing since Ben and Jerry's. You know, it's like we, that, that can be problematic when we think that we've accomplished some great achievements that it will cause us to be prideful and false hope. Stop li living in a perversion of the past. What you do doesn't bring you any closer to God. Shocking. It's not what you do. It's how your heart is, your relationship with him. It's the condition of your heart. Remember, it is by God's grace alone that you are saved. It's not by your works. Your works are the product of who you are today, right? It's, it's what you do because of who you've been, become, I should say. It, it's because of who you've become. Let's go ahead and turn our Bibles to Ephesians 1.7. Hallelujah. Ephesians 1 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. I have some skeletons in my closet. So before you start throwing rocks at me and glares, and you do too, right? But you know what? The skeletons in the closet, they are under the blood. Yeah. Amen. They are under the blood. I've done the confession and the repenting. They're under the blood. Amen. If you turn to Ephesians 2.13, that's why we have to realize and know the power in the blood, the power of the blood to get you unstuck of the past. Okay, there is really nothing good back there. Nothing good back there. Amen. So Ephesians 2.13. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once were far away from God. <clears throat> but now you have been brought near to him. Through what? Through the blood of Christ. Through the blood of Christ. You know... Paul wrote these scriptures that, I'm, that I've read so far. And <clears throat> when I think about Paul, when he um, tells himself that I have harmed no man, it's amazing how he remembers, like just progressingly moving forward, that he is a new creation, that he harmed no one, yes, even though he has a litany of 
things that he's done, wickedness and cruelty in the past, yet he identifies himself as a new creation, that he has harmed no man. He was not denying what he's done. What he's saying is, because of the blood of Jesus Christ that he bought me with his life, with his blood, I am no longer in bondage to that sin. I am no longer a slave to that sin. I am a new man. Amen? Let's go to Matthew 26, 28. So I am encouraged by that, and that's why maybe, maybe I, can, I can see and relate to people who, who may be having a hard time forgiving themselves or getting over themselves or getting through a very difficult past. I, I, can, I can appreciate that. But when I got saved, when I got saved, I just believed. I just believe the word, and I trust the one who speaks to me through his word, because you know why? He is faithful, and he is a, co a covenant keeper, a promise keeper. He's faithful to his word, that I know that he is greater than my mistakes. He is greater than my past, and he will be greater than my future. He says, I know my thoughts and my plans and my purposes for you. It's to give you hope and a good, bright future. Amen. When you say future, it's not in the back, right? It's not in the past. God is doing something now in the future, not back there. Let's go to Matthew 26, 28. You know, we... I know that we read these scriptures and we hear these scriptures over and over and over again here, but I think we really need to remember them where they're at and memorize them and just get them embedded in our spirit because that's when we can go to those passages and verses and, 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 and reassure ourselves and encourage and inspire ourselves that, you know, this is true. It's been written for over 2,000 years, and it still applies today, amen? The blood of Jesus still applies today. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. So if I am God's people, I am under his blood, and I, my sins, my terrible past, is under the blood. So it's, it, it, it's easy for me to realize and remember that, hey, you know what? There is nothing that I could have ever done that could keep me away from the love of God. Amen? It is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. The sins of many. So it's not limiting, it's not limited it's the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sins. Amen? So I have found some reminders on how to get over our past. I've had um, Whitney Hopler, you know, she had um, several, but I only picked a few. Okay. We have to get over our past. It's, it's a must. And, you know, some people choose not to. It, it is a choice, okay, because y you, can, you can live in that address for so long that you just get so familiar with it because, you know, it gives you the entitlement of having an attitude. It gives you, you think, you know, you think that you can say that it's because of this. And how long has this been? Oh, 20 years? You know, it's like you're still there, right? Okay, it, it, it's like you're, you're still angry, you're still mad, you're still bitter, you're still... You still, you just don't enjoy life and nobody enjoys you. And, and that is your, the reason why they stay there. They don't want to be accountable, right, for their actions. Yeah. They don't want to be responsible for themselves for who they are today. It says, realize that you have a choice. Understand that you're not a victim of your circumstances and that no one but you can tie you to the past. Only you. Only you can decide whether or, whether or not to be free and move forward. Let's go to Joshua 24, 15. This is in the Old Testament. 
and we should all know it, right? Joshua 24, 15. But if you refuse to serve the Lord for whatever reason, right? For whatever reason that you refuse to serve the Lord because you're angry at life, you're angry at the world, you're frustrated, you've been victimized. As for me and my house, right? It says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euph Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me, as for me, that's where I'm stuck. As for me and my family, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's a choice. It doesn't matter what my family and I have gone through. It doesn't matter what we've gone through. And I know it's probably like, okay, you know, when we think about persecution, when we think about tragedies, when we think about losses, sometimes it's incomprehensible and it's unthinkable how, how you can get through that. Do you know, when I watch those movies, I am just moved by the Spirit of God, comforted beyond my comprehension that this is how they can go through that is because the, the Holy Spirit is, is real with them and living inside of them. The strength, it's the strength of God, not your strength, that you can move through and forward. It is his strength. But if you don't want to put on that strength, you're choosing, right, to stay and wallow in your pity party in that devastating loss. But choose this day. What are you choosing? So understand that you have a choice. Charles Spurgeon said, obey the mandate of the Lord. Onward, onward, onward. Pretty simple, right? Onward, just go forward, only forward, not rewind forward. Amen. Recognize the difference between learning from the past and living there. If we can go to Galatians 2.20. 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Amen. See, understand that it's healthy to look back again as long as you're learning from it. But beware of becoming so preoccupied with your past that it controls your present. Let God define you, not your past. God, it's God's job to define who you are. And if you live in Christ, then Christ is living in you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you mentally take those past experiences and lay them at the foot of the cross for Jesus to handle. You can't handle them, right? You need help. I'm, I'm talking about me, too. We can't handle them. We have to lay them at the foot of the cross. Let's go ahead and go to um, Ephesians 6, 13. Repent of making the past as an idol of your life. Okay. Make whatever changes you need to make in your life to reinforce your decision and do it. Amen. Don't keep going back and forth. Keep repenting and feeling bad and then crying, yet going back to what you repented from. Does that make sense? It's like we, we are guilty of, of doing that, especially, I hate to say it, especially sisters. You know, we have the tendency to decide and keep deciding, make a decision, 
and then decide again. And then the outcome somehow tends to be the same, right? So Ephesians 6.13, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy of the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm, okay? Um, does anybody know what 2 Corinthians 5.17 is? Amen. Any man be in Christ. Amen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Amen. Old things, old things, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. This is something that we should teach our children, that they should really be able to memorize it because it's something that we, we are. We have been made new. I mean, but do we believe it? Or are we still living like we lived in the past? There are some Christians or professing believers that still act and talk like they were living in their past. You can't tell that they have been born again. Right? It will show by the company you keep, by the materials you, you have, and listen to what the, the words that come out of your mouth. Right? And your attitude. There has been no change. So that's why it's hard for some people to believe that they are new creatures because they can't even believe that they're new creatures because of the way that they are. I mean, people ought to realize the difference in you. People should be able to see the growth in you. Okay? You should be able to see, oh my gosh. I didn't react the way that I used to react. Right. You know, I have a better and godly disposition oh, now. Yeah. Hallelujah. I did not come back with, you know, <laughs> oh, oh, I did not retaliate. I did not have an attitude that was contrary mm. to who I am supposed to be in Christ. Amen? All right. Avoid nostalgia. Okay? Avoid nostalgia. Just because I cry a lot, I, you know, I just, just cry a lot. Because I have those powerful, passionate emotions that come over me. But at the end of that story, I'm all good. I'm just, I'm just a crier. Right? I, I couldn't worship before without just having floods of tears. And you know why? It's because I'm so excited and happy and joyful and grateful yes. that, God, you took me in and I'm not letting you go. I thank you that you never gave up on me, that you took me out from that miserable pit that I thought it was good, but no, it's not. You know, it's like, God, thank you for opening up my eyes. Yes, yes. Amen. So that's why I probably cry a lot, right? Or it's, it, you know, I'm just so thankful to God Almighty. He's good. He's so good. <laughs> Don't be duped into thinking that your ba best days are behind you. Amen. Nope. Okay, don't ever think that. Some people think that, oh, man. You know, COVID-19, I know it's irritating, it's annoying, it's restricting, but you know what? No, the best days are not behind you. Amen. Amen? The best days are not behind you. Let's go to Isaiah 43, 18 through 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect God to continue to bless you in new ways. Okay. He is the God of the impossible. He is, you know what? He created me and you. So I trust him with all of me because he knows best. He is the potter, I am the clay. He's the creator, I'm the created, right? So I know that he can do whatever he wants to do without my permission, without my approval. All I have to do is to trust him and say, God, I may not like it. I may not understand it. I, I 
may not even agree, but your word says, so I surrender. Amen? So, but forget all that. <laughs> not what I just said. It says forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? Come on, saints. you got to read between the lines and you've got to have a vision and envision what this is saying. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. See, even though this was written way back then, God is God and he doesn't change. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow forevermore. Don't you see it? He is on the move. He is on the move. Even the littlest thing, you need to acknowledge it. God, thank you. You know, whatever it is, even the smallest desire of your heart that you did not even say or speak of, he, he knows. He makes provision, and you're just, wow, Lord. And then when he doesn't, let's say he doesn't, and you were disappointed or you had to go through that moment that was not so pleasant. He's still God, and he was there with you. He, he was with you when that happened. Amen? He, he, it's like, th does that mean he's no longer God because you're disappointed? No. Amen? Break free from the chains, the chains of bondage. Don't get enslaved. Don't get enslaved with the same thing that kept you bound that you've been freed from and go back. You have to pray. Do we pray? Do we pray when we're in need only? Do we pray when we're in trouble only? We have to pray without ceasing. I'm not saying that you're praying constantly talking with your mouth moving. It's just praying, acknowledging, and just talking to God. Talking to God and just giving him, giving him the props, giving him the acknowledgement. Recognize that he is God, whether you're in good or bad times. When we shut down, you know, that was kind of a, a scary, unsettling moment, right? Because, wow, this is really happening. And... I, it, it's like I had a conversation with God, like, God, this is really happening, but, you know, I'm looking to you and I'm putting my trust in you that you will be glorified at the end of this. I know that I'm not going to get stuck here. Amen. That you will make a way that we will get back better than ever, strengthened and still not changed, not moved, not shaken. You know, you may have felt fatigued and sick and, you know, and, and we lift each other up. That's when, you know, doesn't that make you pray more? And I was praising more, more. Like just, you know, God might be, I might be short of breath, but you know what? I'm, I'm praising you. I'm singing glory to you. Amen. Amen. Freely express the anger, fear, disillusionment, mistakes and regrets that have resulted from a past trauma in your life. God can handle it. Amen. You know, be honest. Be honest in your prayer. And I'm not saying whining, okay? I don't know how God feels about whining. Or I think I do. It's in the word. It's like he's not moved. He's not moved by our tears. He's moved by our faith. Amen. So we, we, but we can be honest with him, with our anxieties and even fears, okay, you know, we can be, we can feel the fear or be, you know, afraid. And then he reminds us, don't be afraid, right? He says, fear not, don't be afraid. And then all of a sudden, whatever that fear is, it, it does go away. But see, if you don't know and if you do not stick to the word and pray, you are going to be engulfed by fear. It, it, it will paralyze you. But when you're feeling that fear, you're human, right? You're human. I mean, <laughs> Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was pressed. He was probably anxious and, and he was 
he was, I don't want to say fearful, but he was like stressed out, pressured, that he was, he, he, he had blood for sweat, right? But what was he doing in the garden? He was praying. He was praying, but he said, nevertheless, right, that your will be done. He was still surrendering. Okay, so pray. Ask God to, to show you the word, to let it come alive. Do you guys ever pray that? If you don't understand it, God, illuminate your word and give me understanding for me. It's not so you can spit it out to somebody else, but for you to have that revelation knowledge. Amen. Let's go to um, Ephesians 4, 23 through 24. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Break free from the chain. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. If we can go to 2 Corinthians 10, 4. I'm about to take off my and my hand. Okay. 2 Corinthians 10. We use God's mighty weapons, Amen. not worldly weapons. I'm talking about strongholds, right? To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. Okay. And it's off. And to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Amen. Amen. I mean, we should be exuding this. You know, but we can't if we are stuck in our past. We can't if we can't break free from our old habits, right? If we cannot uh, move away from what we might even remotely consider pleasurable, but it's not. It's actually causing you more pain. Amen. Let's go to Psalm 9, 9. So these are some ways how you can get over, over your past. Psalm 9. The Lord is a shelter for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know you or your name trust in you, for you, O Lord, do not abandon those who search for you. Like I said, when I met Jesus, well, I knew him right then. I knew him. I can drop his name and I'm like associated with him. But when I invited him to my life, when I actually invited him to have a relationship with, it, my mindset changed. And it is a process. But, you know, it's like, honestly, I don't want to go back. I won't go back. Why would I want to go back to that whatever it was, right? doesn't matter how good it even felt. It's like, no, I'm going forward. So maybe, again, don't stone me when I don't understand how people can want to go back, right? Okay, I'm not judging. I'm just asking why. Why would you go back? Enlighten me. But, you know, I don't think you can convince me. No. Why go back? You're not, you can't convince me to go back to that, the, the, the life that you once knew if you have a relationship with God, with Jesus. Amen? Um, okay, so next is get rid of the poison of bitterness. Okay, get rid. You know what? You know why people sometimes can't move, from, move on from the past? Is because... They're bitter. It's because of unforgiveness. Yeah. It's because of not being able to let go of the wrong that's been done to them. But, you know, what about, what about you? 
I'm sure, I'm sure you have caused someone pain, okay? So get rid of the poison of bitterness. There is only one antidote to that poison, forgiveness. Let's go to Ephesians 4.31. <clears throat> Don't let people, don't let people control your life and allow you to move away from God. Okay, don't, because that unforgiveness will cause that to happen. You know, it's not going to draw you closer to God, but it will draw you away from Him. Amen. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. It's telling us how to do it. Are we willing to do that? Colossians 3.13. Hallelujah. Make allowance for each other's faults. Whoa. Whoa. Right? This is huge. You know how we get irritated easily, you know? Because they don't get it. They can't get it. Why can't you get it? But God, you know, God is showing me that, and he's working in me, and I'm letting him. And it's, I, I believe that it is working because it's, my heart is getting tenderized even more. I mean, you know, I may still not like to repeat myself, but if I'm not as annoyed. I'm not as irritated. I'm, I'm okay with it. I think, God, that's, that's growth, and I'm giving God the glory because I want to change, right? Amen? Amen? Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. And remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Amen? So, again, if you can't get over something, it's probably because you're harboring unforgiveness. That you have bitterness in your heart because you got passed over, you got ignored, or you got whatever, got turned down, rejected, betrayed, you were not invited, or, you know, or the list can go on, right? But you have to get over that, and especially if it's in the past. You know, we tend to, I tend to, when I retell the story or I tell the story, I tend to get back in the moment. It's like, well, that's already in the past. You know, get over it. I get excitable. It's like, I'm okay. Like, I'm okay, but, you know, um, I am really okay. It's just that I get so emotional retelling it as if, like, I'm still, I'm in that moment getting annoyed all over again, you know. <laughs> so I try to work, I really try to be mindful of that because, yeah, it's over, especially when they tell me, okay, it's over. Then I get irritated. In that moment, I'm like, okay, why are you telling me that? I know, it's over. I'm just telling you what happened. <laughs> it's a cycle, right? Okay, so Proverbs 14.10. I mean, don't we do that, though? Like, especially, especially me. So I'm saying women, sisters. <clears throat> Proverbs 14.10. I think I have a witness over there. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Each heart knows its own bitterness, and no one else can fully share its joy. True, True right? Amen. Amen. So, we're moving on to let go. Let go. This is, I think, the last one that I took from this lady's nice notes. What is her name again? I did say it, because I want to give credit to that. Whitney Hopler. Let go of unhealthy attachments. Don't waste time and energy trying to hold on to something or someone from the past if that person or thing doesn't have a place in your present or future. Amen. Accept reality when you cannot bring back a marriage, job, child, church, reputation, or anything else that you're trying to resurrect. 
realize it, whatever it happens to be is truly over. So get over it. I see some smiling people. Are you guys relating? Or did we just experience this recently? Or are we um, still in it? <laughs> right? And we're trying to get past it? It's okay. As long as you're moving forward, right? As long as you're moving forward. Again, you know, you may stumble a little here and there, but get yourself back up and say, no, you're not going back. No, get up and you're not going back. You're not going back. Amen? <laughs> you're not going back. Lay aside the old self. Okay, lay aside the old self. Let's, let's go talk some scriptures here. I'm getting excitable. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Hallelujah. I know that it hits a nerve, especially when we're talking about relationship. You know, we try to hang on to people that we're tugging along like a cargo. You know what? If you're towing them, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you to get rid of them, but you're towing them. You know, how can you walk together unless you agree? You need to be side by side, not towing them, right? Amen. That's just my thought, okay? Um, so, you know... I'm not afraid to eat alone. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Unbelievers. If they don't believe like you do, how? How is that going to work? How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? Okay, again, you're making a choice, they're making a choice. How can light live with darkness? Um, what harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? How can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? And what union can there be between God's temple and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will live in them and walk among, among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Come out. Be ye separate. 1 Thessalonians 5.21. But test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Amen. Hold on to what is good. Now, realize that God has allowed and used people and things in our lives to build us up. Now we must move and trust him. See, let's not blame God and be angry at God for the circumstances that we had to go through because of our sinfulness, Amen. because of the fallen world, because what we've inflicted in ourselves or others. Sometimes it may not be in your control. It's not God's fault. Again, he does not mingle, and he, I mean not mingle, he does not, um, what's the word I'm saying? He, he will not interfere. Thank you. Um, you know, he, he will not interfere because, because he will allow, because of our self-will. However, he is still in control, and we can pray to him and ask him for help. Amen. Amen. What God has in store for you, remember this, what God has in store for you, if you don't remember anything else, is never in the past. Right. What God has in store for you wasn't yesterday. It's not in the past. He has something better than that relationship. He has something greater than your worries and fears. He has something better than that job that you lost. He has something better than your mistakes that you've made. Amen. He has something greater than past mistakes. But you have to let go and let God. He is in control. Know that, but you've got to release the wheel of the past. Amen. You've got to let it go. You've got to release the wheel. And when we say, Jesus, take the wheel, let go 
of the wheel. Amen. Don't try to grab it back. We have a tendency to do that. Um, I have a quote that I'm going to read before I close. It's by C.S. Lewis. He says, getting over a painful experience is much like crossing monkey bars. You have to let go at some point in order to move forward. Amen. Did you learn anything tonight? Hallelujah. Thank you for coming tonight.